Time to talk books now, and we're celebrating one of South Africa's most prolific authors. She writes in Afrikaans, but her books have been translated into over a dozen languages. Marita van der is considered a local treasure, writing both youth literature and also novels for adults. Now, some of you might even have had her books as set works at school. These days, she lives in France, but she paid South Africa a visit recently to launch her new book, Borderline. Our resident book reviewer, Andrea van Veek, has read it. She's here to tell us more. Good morning, Andrea. Now, tell us this book. It's partly about the Angolan border war. Yes. So what happens is a woman finds a box of her ex-husband things, and he was a soldier in the border war during the 1970s. And in this box, she discovers a letter in Spanish. And when she reads her ex-husband's diary, she discovers that this letter was taken off a Cuban soldier that he had killed. Wow. Um, and he desperately wanted to find the person whom the letter was addre uh, addressed to. This letter was addressed to that soldier's unborn daughter. And Teresa, the main character, then decides, no, she wants to deliver this 40-year-old letter, and she's going to Cuba to do it. Um, and so she has a whole bunch of adventures there. Um, I did want to ask uh, Marita van der Feyfer when I spoke to her last week, what inspired the book, seeing as she has already written one book about the Angolan War. Let's have a listen. Cool. As the years went by, more and more I realized looking around me, looking at many of the men I know, especially the older generation, and their wives and their children, I see um, the damage of the border war. We're not done with that. It's still a wound. And the reaction that this book is getting shows that to me. Interesting, she says we're not done with that very difficult and uncomfortable period in our history. Uh, tell us about why she set the book in Cuba. So part of the reason was, of course, that the main character had to go to Cuba and she specifically wanted her character to go there. She went there herself, the author, to investigate and do the kind of road trips that her, her character does. It's really, what's lovely about this is the rich descriptions of Cuba. It's the kind of thing that makes you want to actually go there. And I did ask her about her, what really, uh, what the magic of Cuba was. Let's have a listen. Cuba is a very colorful place um, and it's there's music and there's a kind of a hedonism with the cigars that even a hundred year old ladies smoke people and the rum um, a lot of that I think is like tourism cliches um, but it is also true if you are there. Teresa fights against these things, but you are, she is drawn in. Um, and there's that kind of sexy communism. I think it's the only place on earth where communism is still really colorful and sexy. <laughs> sexy communism, that sounds fantastic. Interesting way of describing <laughs> yes, it, isn't very. it? Um, she mentioned earlier that she had written another book about the Angolan border war. Uh, did she explain exactly why she needs, she did say we're not done yet, but did she does she give you more detail on that? Well, she, like you said, she's already written one book about the border war, um, but she decided that it's not all over, um, that people carry the wounds of war and the things that they've seen with them forever. Mm -hmm. So I did ask her why she wanted to go back to that. Let's have, uh, that. Let's have a listen. <laughs> if it can open up the conversation about the border war specifically, and war in general, about the lingering effects of war. I think if I can only do that, I would already feel that I've done something. I think, um, and my hope is that not only the older generation who remembers it would read it, but also the younger ones who, who don't know. Did she write it in Afrikaans first? She did write it in Afrikaans first. It's been translated into English, uh, which is something that has happened with all her books. Um, I did read it in English because I decided that I wanted to see if the descriptions um, are as rich as they would have been in the Afrikaans novel. Mm. Um, but uh, the one thing that really struck me about this book was that, uh, you know, the way that it just draws you, that draws you in. Interestingly enough, there's been a lot of negative reaction to the book as well. I think partly because uh, she tries to see it from the Cuban side. She's not just trying to see it from the South African side. She's trying to imagine what it would have been like for other soldiers who had to fight on the opposite side of the wall. 
It's quite amazing um, how prolific she is, and she tackles a lot of, of topics. And, you know, as we were saying earlier, she's, you know, a lot of her books have been set works for schools. Um, is her style very different from book to book, or do you find that you can tell that you're reading a Marita von Afeifer book right from the get-go? I do think she does have a style. Uh, like I said, her descriptions are very rich. Uh, they're emotionally uh, charged. Um, you really get drawn into the stories. She likes to explore things that uh, matter, that are quite deep. Mm. So, especially in her children's books, for example, she also explores issues that affect young people. She's, she started writing youth literature before she started writing novels for adults. And I actually had one of her set works um, <laughs> in high school, uh, Die Wierlichvoel, as one of my Afrikaans set works. So she is able to appeal to audiences across the board. Of course, we are moving into the festive season where we're all scouting around for great beach reads and books that really sort of open up our imagination. Is it a difficult, painful read because it deals with a difficult, painful part of our history, or is it ultimately just a rollicking good read that anyone can enjoy? I think it's something that's a par partly both. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, you really it really tries to help you understand the war and the damage of the war mm. but at the same time when you go to Cuba all it's made me want to do is go to Cuba <laughs> it's it's and lovely drink rum. <laughs> absolutely mojitos <laughs> I need to go to Havana and have mojitos and look at the the Plymouths um, and the old cars and the colorful buildings I think sexy communism as she sexy says sexy communism <laughs> exactly and tell me you've got another book on your list tell me about Sarah Lotz so Sarah Lotz is an Irish author but she actually lives in Cape Town so she's quite accessible to us and one or two of her books um, have been partially set in Cape Town. Uh, this book is a thriller. Uh, it's called Missing Person and one of the reasons it attracted me is because two of my favorite authors gave it shout outs. One was Lauren Bierkus and the other one is Stephen King. Fantastic. So she's quite popular. Uh, the book is about a young man, Irish man, who discovers that his uncle, whom he thought had died in a car accident, actually uh, had left his family and was murdered and the family had tried to cover this up and he's trying to figure out well why was this covered up um, and to do that he goes to the United States which is where his uncle went before he died and he links up with one of those websites where people are sleuthing uh, unsolved murder, murders and unidentified bodies so you actually get those websites in real life Wow, they're quite popular uh, you get these threads on Reddit for example where people are trying to help identify bodies that the police have not been able to identify <sighs> or so help solve murders by gathering evidence and linking people together to see if they can find out more information so he becomes involved with one of these groups uh, to help him solve this case so did it live up to um um, Lauren Burkus, for example, Stephen King. So I think this was a very entertaining read mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't very difficult to read but I think some of her earlier books are better. Okay. Um, she also writes in a sort of semi-horror genre, uh, not quite Stephen King, but for example, her book The Three was one of the creepiest things I've ever read. <laughs> um, so I think if you're looking for um, a bit more of a thrill, mm. um, a bit more of something that's going to get your heart racing, I would rather go and read The Three. Um, if you're looking for something that's not difficult to read, that will entertain you, mm. um, that is probably a good beach read or a good holiday read if you don't feel like you want to have this major mental challenge, uh, this is going to be a good book for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's wonderful to relax with a good book on the beach, isn't it? Absolutely. So Sarah Lott's Missing Person, certainly one to explore. Andrea, thank you so much. For